these terms <laughs> and expressions, they don't come out in my textbook. Yeah. Like. Hi guys, welcome to another week of intercultural communication with me, my teacher, Claudia. I'm going to be sharing with you an interview that I did with my friend Praveen on effective uh, study tips. Uh, so if you like this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel for more content such as these. And I hope you enjoy the video. 안녕하세요. 저는 나이드라에서 온 대학원생 프로브라고 합니다. 만나서 반갑습니다. What languages can you speak? All right, um, as you know, I speak English, but I also speak Korean and some Japanese, yes. And... And that's it. <laughs> no, you, what's your, you speak Yoruba, right? Oh, my own language as yeah. well. Oh, that's the language. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it was very relevant, but if you're putting that as well, then okay, fine. My language is Igbo, then I speak, of course, English, then Korean and Japanese. Yeah. So you're a polygon. I literally say that. You can, you can, you can claim that. it. You can claim it. Okay, good. Um, the next question I have is, what are some of your uh, study tips? So, do you have any study tips that you would highly recommend? Uh, especially when studying a language. Mm. Um, before the tips, I believe that uh, the the fundamental point. For every person has to be the interest yeah. that you actually want to learn the language because if you don't then it's just like building a house without a foundation so i believe that <laughs> i believe that interest acts as the basic foundation for your learning you know and um once you have that foundation laid down then um consistency is another thing that you need to put in because it's work yeah it, it needs your time it needs your effort because you can't you can't learn a language just like that mm -hmm. it needs you your own like contribution to it you yeah. know so i'm just gonna say that these are like the two main mm -hmm. things about learning yeah. a language yes. yes do you have any speaking techniques because many people struggle with speaking and especially now that we're just doing everything by ourselves mm -hmm. What can you do at home to right. like improve your speaking? Right, right. For everyone, it could be very different, obviously. So I'm just going to speak from my own personal experience. Mm. Um, repeating a lot mm. and actually speaking a lot has really helped me. Okay. Because, I mean, coming to Korea in this era of social distancing and restrictions where we can't easily meet people as would have been in a normal situation could really cause a negative impact on our yeah. studying and it could actually cause us to lose our motivation i mean mm -hmm. i have no one to speak with so i can't practice what i've learned mm -hmm. but be that as it may mm -hmm. you living by yourself i believe if we open our mouths to actually speak out loud what yeah. we've learned when we're practicing it really helps a lot mm -hmm. because for me i live alone and then for example i'm watching a series Mm. A, a drama or something and I hear something really cool or hear a recent uh, a gram point I've learned recently mm -hmm. being used in a sentence I just immediately pause and then I just read it out loud it out and loud. say it so many times <laughs> in character out of character <laughs> like I'm acting and stuff yeah. so just to make it fun yeah you know so I, I do say it out loud and I mean, there's no one there, so no one's gonna think I'm crazy. You don't feel strange. You don't feel like oh, Why should you've done it so many times that you're now so okay. It's cool. as you know, I speak to myself a lot. <laughs> I do it a lot, like a crazy person. So you so, need to be a little bit crazy. Too. Yeah, I really don't care at this point, really. So saying it out loud, not even just then in the moment, but maybe after a few hours, I yeah. remember, and then I say it again. In the middle of the night, like when I'm trying to sleep, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, that thing I learned yesterday, I say it again." 
So it's really helped. So when I did meet my friends, my Korean friends, I did meet with them and we're having a conversation and stuff. Mm -hmm. I want to use what I've learned. <laughs> so I just try to control the conversation mm -hmm. to, you know, to, to maneuver it, to say that thing I've learned, yeah. you know, and it, it's really helped, honestly. So do you have an example of something that you learned and you were so like, so like, I need to say this word. <laughs> well, <laughs> or um, phrase. Yeah, I, I, I learned, uh, uh, they call it mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. uh, an expression. Yeah. Um, just one of it would be like, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. means um, cheap is actually expensive. Mm -hmm. When you want to buy something that's really cheap, uh, thinking it's cheap, you spend a lot of money. You mm -hmm. do spend money, but at the end of the day, uh, you have to fix it. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's kind of incurring costs. Yeah. So it's cheap. But not really cheap, mm -hmm. you know. So like when you're buying something with low quality, you know. And then an another one was like, um, mm -hmm. like the, the person who causes the problem and also offers prefers a solution. Mm -hmm. I heard it on TV one time. <laughs> so using that with the sentence like, uh, <laughs> you know, something like that. It was. How do you feel about slang? Because when I was standing at the Ohakdang at Kangde we were using textbooks obviously mm. and the pyojino that appeared in the textbooks and i'd go out and then you're having a conversation with someone or you're just in a cafe and you're mm. eavesdropping on someone else's conversation and like all these terms <laughs> and expressions they don't come out in my textbook yeah. like all the stuff you we work so hard to memorize people don't even use it <laughs> now they're like excuse me you know there's nothing that can be done about that because language evolves yeah to be quite honest especially spoken language so um unfortunately these evolution cannot be trapped in a textbook so for that being said we i personally had to make the extra effort to learn these things from my friends to be honest mm. I had to learn, like, I want to know what is the slang. Yeah. Okay. And aside from that, one thing I noticed was that I could also um, find use of these things through um, Yinun program. Okay. Yinun program means like entertainment programs, mm -hmm. you know, like all these uh, shows, yeah, yeah, talk right. shows, or when they speak to each other, they do use these lines yeah. because it doesn't have to be formal, like the news or yeah. essays, discussions, yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. So I also could find use of you know these lines like this mm. and for the students if it's possible for them to get an english slang book that would be cool mm. and in the movies also when you're watching movies you do hear them yeah, use these slides yeah. a lot you know so it helps well, that's a good tip mm. um now this is again a big topic how did movies and dramas help you to learn for me, ja learning Japanese and learning my learning Japanese and learning Korean techniques were quite different mm. because in studying Korean, I didn't even know I was studying Korean because <laughs> I was just enjoying them dramas, yeah. just watching and it enjoying. Was so natural right it's it was i didn't know when i started switching out the english for <laughs> korean you know so that one came purely from interest in korean drama culture yeah. i was really interested in culture so movies kind of worked for me that way in which i'd watch something or a scene i understand what it means with subtitles obviously okay. and then after watching that scene i might want to you know see how much i understand and then remove the subtitles and watch the scene again okay wow yeah without the subtitles watch it again and then i'm able to at that point i'm focused not on the subtitles in english but on exactly what they're saying mm -hmm. like if i'm focused on the words themselves it makes me understand the language structure which is very different from english yeah, actually yeah. Um, where the verb comes, where the subject comes, where the object comes, intonation, mm -hmm. pronunciation, mm -hmm. all these kind of little details we might overlook when we're just reading subtitles, yeah. you know? So because of that, I'm able to trust my ears okay. better than my eyes okay. instead of my eyes. So it really, really helps actually, mm -hmm. you know? And um, of course, if you want to delve into spelling, which has <laughs> been quite a quite a challenge for me 
Um, then I watch it with Korean subtitles, actually. So Korean, the the language is in Korean, the subtitles is are in Korean. Korean. Yes. Okay. So I watch it with Korean subtitles, where not only am I listening and understanding, I'm able to read as well, mm. spelling as well as the particles. My God, and particles. <laughs> That's one thing I really. I'm still struggling with actually using the, the correct chosa, the, mm -hmm. the correct particles. You see it, and that also like for studying. Japanese, on the other hand, um, uh, the technique for studying that one was just the opposite. Actually, okay. I I wasn't really, still not interested in. <laughs> Japanese uh, movies and dramas Why? in full. I'm sorry, I, I love the Japanese culture. I've lived among them. They, I feel like they're, it's like home for me in yeah. a way. And yeah. nothing's going to change about that. It's just, I wasn't introduced to Japanese culture and language the way I was to Korean. Mm -hmm. It was just different. So I relied more on the textbooks. Textbooks and my everyday conversation with my japanese friends okay you know that's what made basically what i relied on so i'd study these terms and i put more book work okay when it came to japanese when it came to japanese than i ever did with korean mm. so like more it was more serious more formal more mm. i gotta learn this mm. in the textbook i'd read textbook after textbook after textbook and memorize um uh vocabulary mm -hmm. whereas for korean all i had to do is just listen Okay. and then i'd repeat so it was kind of different it's different yeah and so motivated by interest you you just it just naturally flowed. yes whereas for japanese mm. i was motivated by need to know okay because yeah. you were living and because working. i was living and working in japan yeah. um and it was a little bit unexpected at the time you know so i just found myself you know you just thrust into the japanese culture and I wanted to belong i wanted to understand what was going on around me so that need to be to understand and be understood is what you know drove me to you know study so in a way it's kind of like interest also yeah. you know you have to have a foundation yeah. that's good good stuff um what skill do you struggle with the most right now in yeah. korean yeah in korean the skill i struggle with the most um I still struggle with my grammar use, proper okay. tenses and stuff, especially in speaking. Okay. Um, when I'm speaking, you know, in that moment, you have to form your sentence. So sometimes when I'm trying to explain myself, the way I think it in my head is not necessarily the way it comes out. So I'm still struggling with that, particles and writing. <laughs> writing. I'm still struggling with writing. Proper um, spelling, proper you know particles proper yeah yeah struggle. it's a struggle <laughs> <laughs> um do you use writing in any creative ways for that i suppose because right now where i'm just focused basically on my major i don't have as much time to study korean so how i practice my writing first of all is reading a lot mm -hmm. i figured if i read a lot of korean texts areas of interest obviously um i wouldn't read something that is boring to me <laughs> whether it's a novel or an essay that i'm interested in when i read it i i see how they're able to effectively use um uh oh effectively arrange their thoughts into a sentence using um advanced words yeah. proper grammar and like when you read some essays you could feel what the writer is thinking mm. so there's some specific choices of words they use and i try when i read it i'm like so impressed i want to replicate what i've read mm. you know so in a kind of i think my friend said it was she very poetic mm. you know in a poetic way i want to recreate it so this is actually a true story i couldn't sleep one night and i was not because i was anxious or anything i just had too much coffee that day and i knew what was going to happen so i was just lying down there counting sheep and <laughs> it, it wasn't working so i just kept thinking to myself <sighs> so thinking all these thoughts over and over again i don't know when i just picked my paper and pen mm. and then started to write a poem in the fact that 
I can't sleep <laughs> in Korean. Like if I had it with me now, I'd like read it for the <laughs> students to hear because it's just funny actually. <laughs> It's quite cool. Yeah, so that's one way that I do it. Yeah. Get creative. Oh, and keeping a diary also works. Mm -hmm. Um, how has debating helped you? And when I got to Hikup, the mm. sixth level of Korean study, we started to have debates on different topics. Mm -hmm. You know, so um it was my favorite part of my Hagi class because all the things we had learned, you know, sitting and listening to the teacher, grammar, vocabulary, sentence structures, everything we could now implore and, and use when giving our own opinions, okay. you know? So it wasn't that I was repeating something I'd heard or read, but I was making my own sentences. I was, you know, telling others of my own perspective in Korean about a serious topic with the correct grammar points. Mm -hmm. And I felt very good about it. Um, so we're currently studying, uh, so we're doing a combination of studying how to communicate with other cultures yes. as well as just how to improve our own personal skills. Sure. So when it comes to other cultures or communicating with other cultures, what are some tips that you would give? Communicating with other cultures? With someone from a different culture. Ah, right. So okay, kind okay. of having a good, yes. building a good friendship or yes. an introduction, but the person is not from you, the same culture as you. So what are some of the things that you've experienced that have helped you with that? Yes. Uh, first thing is, is to respect the other person's culture. Um, I, and do not impose your own culture or your own perspective of thinking on that person um going to japan and living there you know there's there's just like a culture shock you'd call it a difference in the way people live um i will not say oh because this is I'm, where i'm from we don't do this so for example something as simple as wearing your shoes into the house it's normal in some countries like in america even in my country for the most part it's kind of some people do it you know but then you go there and then you just walk in with your own shoes it's disrespectful even if the person doesn't say anything it's still disrespectful so i've been very conscious of these things to respect these people's cultures because we're in korea or i was in japan at the time i mean if i didn't if i wasn't going to observe all these little things and respect them there was no need for me to be there in the first place so when you meet someone from another culture first of all don't impose your own ideologies or culture on them because they are not you know from your country mm -hmm. try to learn like be open-hearted like be open-minded rather that's another thing i'm just really open-minded like even with food with Lang some people move here thinking oh if i have a uh, korean spouse then i don't need to learn korean i don't believe that stuff honestly um i've made the effort to be my here. husband's not korean by the way <laughs> <laughs> i still don't know the language no <laughs> <laughs> i'm just giving an example because i had a few uh, uh foreign friends who were married to japanese spouses and then you tell them they've been in japan for 13 years they can't say a single sentence in japanese because when it comes to the taxes or the health bills they're like my wife's just gonna do it or my husband is just gonna do it and i'm like you're here all these years and you don't even make an effort to learn i mean ooh, how do you feel about that you know i just for me i just feel it's wrong how do i feel about that <laughs> are you talking no, to me no i'm not, not talking to you trust me i this don't is not feel good <laughs> no this joke. is not a diss for it's you it's not even a diss i think over time yes i don't know about your japanese friends yeah but over time yeah. priorities change so my priority when I first came to Korea wasn't to stay here, it was to experience it. Of course. So at the time, it didn't feel necessary of to course. learn the language. Of course. But yet, as things have changed, where I got married and I didn't think, you know, like, now I feel like, okay, I can invest in the language because I want it to last longer. So I feel like for me, at the time, it was like, it would be a one or two year thing. Mm -hmm. So I, and I just thought i'll move on to another place so yeah. that, i think it's just priorities for me but i do highly agree mm. language really does you know knowing the language to at least a certain extent is really really good this is not a one size fits all for everyone yeah, it, yeah. the circumstances are different yeah. you know so i mean yours is obviously understandable mm. you know i'm just giving an instance yeah yeah, yeah. no but i highly agree with you language is super important yeah. and now looking back 
I, like you mentioned earlier about motivation, when I first came to Korea, I was highly motivated. Like I was on it, but it was just like, I should have like almost at that point, I should have hit it hard, mm -hmm. but I didn't. And then I came to Chuncheon and that was probably the worst thing for my Korean mm -hmm. because I so suddenly found myself in a bigger city where speaking Korean wasn't as necessary as the smaller city. Right. I found, and I had less Korean friends, less Korean, and everything just became more, more foreign, more yeah. isolating. Mm -hmm. So without the need or the push, there really wasn't that much pressure. Yeah. Whereas in Hwachon, you want to do anything, <laughs> you need to speak the language. <laughs> so um, yeah, my circumstances changed a bit, but looking back, I'm like, ah, I should have really pursued it hard before. Um, the other question is, we're going to be taking a look at universities around the world and just kind of learning about the university experience in general. So you studied a bit in Nigeria. Of course. What was university in Nigeria like? If you would describe it in a nutshell. Different. <laughs> How different? I can just say that here. It was different. <laughs> Very different from what I've had so far here. Um, uh, the Nigerian educational system is developing, ING, emphasis on ING. So it's not as developed as, you know, we've got here in Chuncheon or in Korea. So um, you'd have cases where classes are, can be canceled anytime, depending on, or you have a class full of hundreds of students with just one uh, professor in front who is teaching with not a very loud voice. There's not that many visual aids and yeah. But but in the midst of such environment, it, it wasn't as conducive as I've got here and now. In the midst of that environment, being able to survive and study, you know, still kind of, you know, there's this saying that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, you know? So if I was able to go through all that and still study effectively, coming here in a more conducive environment with, with you know, better um, um, and more effective classes, you know, I, I could say I'm doing well if I could, yeah. But it, it's de definitely different, you know, and, and um, back at home, we're not spoon fed when we're being taught, actually. Like we had to do a lot of research by ourselves and learn stuff by ourselves. We couldn't completely rely on just being taught by the professor. You'd have to do like extensive reading and stuff. Yeah, but it was fun. Mm, it was true. fun because you have your friends going through the same situation as you. I learned a lot and I would not give up that experience for anything in the world, mm -hmm. to be honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's home. Mm -hmm. Even if it was, it's not as, we're still, we're growing, we're getting there, but it's still home amongst our people and yeah all right guys that is all for this week um i'd really like to thank Provi for her time coming in and answering my questions we had to do this so many times because i'm not a pro yet but i really appreciate her tips please do follow her tips and if you have any qu other questions about how to study how to learn english especially when you're at home please do contact me, do message me. I'm always open for a conversation. So that's it. That's all, completely all for this week. No more videos. Have a great week uh, and see you next time. Bye-bye.